Hello once again everyone, and so I'm kind of back into the flow of doing random I thought about this or someone requested it videos, so I want to talk a little bit about Tarj. Now, important thing, this is not a full like this, this is not a getting, you know, getting more series where I'm going to be talking about, you know, the Tarj as it was used, etc. This is just, I have been playing around with my Tarj a lot lately, in particular I've been playing around with my Tarj a lot lately with an arming sword instead of a um, broadsword, well technically it's a broadsword, basket hilt. And a couple things I have observed from therein. I'm not alone in these observations. So first off, let's go over the attributes of Tarj compared to other shields that I've talked about on the channel. Number one, my Tarj is on the larger side. It is approximately 22 inches across, um, maybe slightly more than 21. This is on the larger end of Tarjas, most of them bounce anywhere from 18 to about 22. Um, and as such, this is one of my smaller shields. Um, it even feels kind of slightly smaller since it's strapped to my arm compared to my buckler, which is held out away from me. And as a part of that, there are certain things that don't necessarily feel as good. So when it comes to, for example, use of the Rotella, uh, which even if they're smallest is bigger than this, and sometimes it should be known, Rotella are just as flat as this. However, because of its size, this does not feel very protective when I hold it out in front of me. Not that I could not still do um, Rotella actions with it, just that out here it's really feeling quite exposed. It's pretty easy to get around. It's not that hard to get over either. I can do it, not my preference. So instead, what am I going for? Instead, I am keeping it a little bit more withdrawn. My arm is not up here by my head yet. It's just kind of out in front of me. My hand is still in full visibility. You can think of this as basically just holding a high outside guard. Now, the reason that I want to talk about this in regards to the arming sword is that there's a couple things that have kind of developed as a sort of rule, almost, that I've been using, which has been proving with pretty good success. And as hopefully I'll be getting some others of these into the school soon, people will get to play around with them. So this is sort of a happy, uh, happy, healthy guide for starting off. So firstly, my recommendation, if you are new to using a shield, in combination with a sword that does not have a complex crossguard, right? Well, handguard. Keep your sword level with the edge of your shield. They don't have to be connected, but I don't want my hand advancing beyond my shield unless I'm in the midst of doing an attack. The reason for this is that your hand is going to become a very enticing target since it will be the easiest thing to hit. And given that you don't have anything terribly complex, pretty achievable. Even if I do have, for example, my back sword or things along those lines, I still keep it relatively parallel because pushing it out there just now exposes the wrist and pretty much everyone is used to taking the wrist. So keep them about even. Now for your guards, I've kind of been bouncing between two of them. For the most part, just sort of a slight outside guard will do fine. My tip is slightly more elevated as opposed to extended, though you can do both. The reason for this is that for the most part, since I'll be facing another shield, I'm not really threatening much if my sword is pointed in the midst of their shield. We'll get back to that when we switch guards. It is better for me to be able to threaten above the shield, either with a small cut or a turning thrust. So about two or so inches over the rim of their shield should be pointed right at their eyebrow. As for the wrist, it's slightly turned to the outside, not straight on. I don't want this to turn into A-frame fighting. I want that slight turn so that way I can decidedly close this line out and my cross guard is now a bit more useful for me. Now, let's go on to, before we get to the inside, let's also talk about stance because that directly impacts the next action. My recommendation, regardless of what system you study in regards to shield, if you are newer to it, stand right foot forward as much as possible. You may absolutely use your left foot as an entry with a cut or things along those lines, but as soon as you are in distance, keep your right foot in front. The reason I say this is not because it's, you know, without benefit to be left foot forward. And certainly as you become more comfortable, more options will become available to you. But because you're not necessarily used to presenting that target, which from your opponent is a lot clearer than it is for you, this opens up a lot of attacks to the leg. Being right foot forward, the attacks are still there, absolutely. But number one, if I am standing like so, my leg is now the closest thing to your sword. Versus if I'm here, my leg and arm are equal. My whole right side is now my opening, as opposed to an Aeneas shot. You can still go for the leg, but to get there, you're going across a lot more space. Again, with time, you will absolutely be changing feet 
not constantly, but relatively often. However, for starting off, prioritize keeping your dominant leg in front, and you'll be doing a little better. You won't just get sniped all the time. Now, let's move on now to the inside guard. So, for my inside guard, I'm just going to move the sword over so that it's lined up with my left hip. If I were doing this without, that feels weird. If I were doing this without a shield, this would be the same as I hold a normal flug, eva, or whatever you want to call it. The idea, I'm not trying to connect my weapons, I'm just closing off entirely this inside line. This invites attacks to the outside of my body. If you want to, you can also bring your feet a little more in line at the same time. That really closes things up. For my attacks from here, I'm going to let my tips slightly lower. I can still keep it at the same level, but I prefer for it to drop slightly. The reason for this is that now, from my perspective, bear in mind that this, this guard is facing against this shape or this shape, I am able to get my tip in over the sword arm or between the weapons a lot easier with a couple different attacks. As such, lining myself up a little more, not only do I open my side up, so if you're going to take that opening, I can get the opportunity to close in the outside guard, but now I can also start working toward your sword side, which is what I would prefer to do. Which also brings us neatly to my first really recommendation of attack. When it comes to launching your attacks, only attack on the shield side if something is clearly visible. Option number one, they're standing left foot forward because they're not thinking about the shield very much. Take that leg. Priority target. Threaten head, take leg, fence is first trick. If they're not giving you that target or they're a little bit more wary, only attack at the shield side if you get them moving the shield. Which also brings us to the idea of moving shield versus pairing with sword. So, ideally, you should be doing a mix of the two. If he's attacking anything, he or she, attacking anything in extremity, my sword deals with it. Because this is the best tool for me to deal out in space. So, attack at the wrist, that's going to be the sword taking care of it. Attack at the leg, if I don't just slip, that's again going to be the sword taking care of it. Attack to drive me with the line, preferably the sword, preferably the prime parry. If the attack comes in at my person, on the right side, for the most part, that shouldn't be all that common, but on the inside between, that's when the shield comes in. It's going to be much more of the idea of the shield coming slightly across, as opposed to trying to go up or down. It still may need to come up or down at times, but you don't want to get caught doing this. That's how you start getting fainted at the leg, cut at the head, and vice versa. Instead, something's coming between my weapons, little catch, preferably while keeping my head to the side so I can see around my shield, and if need be, I can cover whatever opening with my sword. I try not to bring the shield across from me. If I do need to get the shield further than that, I will step back as I do so, which fully covers my body against the attack, and then immediately step back again so that my leg does not become a target. This sort of traverse backwards has served me very, very well against people trying to use combinations. Now, in regards to guarding up top, for the most part, this is where you could play around with the idea of the shield. Again, I'm putting it more on an angle, so I'm not going up, I'm going across, so I can still see underneath it as much as possible. This should cover the majority of shots coming in from either side. Reason being is that if I push this in, even though I can still see the camera, this edge protrudes further than my fist. It's making sure that I'm mostly safe from any attack, and my sword can be there if it's wider than that. In regards to the inside line, the same thing's true. So front edge or face is what I'm going to be parrying with. If I need to raise my guard, it should only be if a point or something is coming in, then I can use the sword to push that away, to push that away, and mostly it's just going to be prime parry from here on out. Now, in regards to how you should be moving, I'd recommend to keep your steps relatively small. What I mean by small is you can absolutely start springing around with this. You can do your normal sort of wide passing steps, and if you're comfortable with that, go ahead. Bear in mind, though, you should approach that fight more as I am fighting with the sword alone and I'm holding a targe. As long as it's not getting in your way, follow all your regular movements, and with only minor modification, nothing should really change that much. However, if you are playing, especially against another Tarj, and the other person being cautious, keep your movement small. Mostly, think of this in the same way that I usually recommend a move with Sword and Buckler. It's going to be small little movements. I'm still usually moving both feet at a time, but it's more about working from this little frame to get what I want done, as opposed to big springs. Really, the only time I'm going to spring largely is if I can get my sword working on their sword side, 
that's the time to then bring this foot up, get that angle that I had, poke, cut, whatever you need. Now finally, let's also talk about the cuts. Because I mentioned them briefly, but I really do want to emphasize this. Even though I'm using an arming sword, I would still recommend cutting in the manner of a back sword. The reason I recommend this is because with the exception of any time I bring my guard back, so for example, going into something like second ward or first ward or what have you, or even you know over down to fifth ward, for the most part, all this allows me to do is be a little more comfortable with adding shoulder cuts. So what you'll feel as a back sorter going into this, it's like, oh, now I can afford to do a shoulder cut every once in a while. What you'll feel as someone who, for example, does sort of buckler or messer, it'll be, oh, now I need to be more careful about where I put my narrow cuts, because they're a little bit more beneficial now. So on those narrow cuts, it's going to be pretty much the same as fighting out of the medium guard. It'll be just angle, extend, angle, extend. Not huge, deep, leaving cuts, but the benefit of all of these is that they're very cost-effective for your attacks. It keeps your arms back, and for the most part, you're going to be launching them with just the head, the arm, the torso, or the wrist. So, relatively straightforward, and they all then bring your tip out without causing me to overextend my hand. So, like I said, not a actual historical how-to. You could also, in theory, apply these same rules to fighting with a Rotella if you were using an arming sword or things along those lines, or just a simple sword of some nature. Though I will say that Rotella has a lot of writing on it. This is also not to be, meant to be a, you know, pure historical, this is how they use the targe, but there are some principles in there that bear some mind. Right? Alternatively, you could use this with something like a center grip dark, uh, dark age shield, so a viking shield or a heater shield or anything along those lines, but really keep it simple. Right? Use your shield, hide behind it, treat it like armor, and just work those little attacks as you go and watch out for that left leg, and that should go relatively far. At least that's been very successful for me. If you have any thoughts out there, by all means, please share them. Um, otherwise, though, hopefully I'll get some sparring footage of this up soon, as it's a lot of fun to play with. And once I get those uh, other charges in, then you'll definitely be seeing more of it. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.